Apple's Find My Device feature is some of the most useful software that Apple has ever created. After all, if you're going to pay over $1,000 for an Apple device, there better be some way for you to recover it in the event that it gets lost or stolen. But how does Find My Device actually work? How does it affect the privacy of your Apple devices? The original version of Find My was Find My iPhone, which really doesn't have a super complex technology behind it. In fact, Find My iPhone was basically built into cellular technology from the very beginning. Whenever you connect to a cell tower, you're sending signals back and forth. The cell tower knows what its position on the earth is, and it can figure out based on your signal strength and what direction your signal is coming from, where you are in relation to the tower. Now, most people live within several cell towers, especially if they're in a city. And if you're within the range of three or more, they can all ping your device and communicate your distance from them with the other cell towers and determine what your exact location is. But what if you're trying to find a device that doesn't have a cellular receiver or built-in GPS, something like an iPad or a MacBook? Well, Apple designed Find Mime. They basically designed it by taking some of the features that their devices already had, like Bluetooth and AirTags, and decided to just use those features on their customer's phone to turn the global Apple ecosystem into some kind of a giant terrestrial network for finding missing Apple products. So basically, if you have an iPhone, as you're going about your day-to-day -day life, it's going to be continually scanning the air for a beacon message uh, that a missing iPhone is going to be constantly sending out, sort of like a distress call. And when your Apple device picks up this message through Bluetooth, it automatically sends a report to Apple that the missing device has been detected along with your current location and a timestamp. Now, this isn't a unique idea either. Uh, there's other tech that has been used to do this, like the Tile Wallet and Key Finder. But there's obviously a lot more Apple devices that are out there in the world than just those Tile Key Finders. And the more devices that you have out there looking for the missing device beacons, the more powerful this service is. It's basically the largest crowdsource location tracking system in existence. Now, if you're privacy, if you're a privacy-minded person, you're probably already creeped out by the idea of this, right? Your phone is constantly reporting to Apple the time and place when it most recently detected a lost or stolen iPhone. Not to mention the extra data usage and battery usage that this whole process might use, especially if you're around a lot of stolen iPhones. I mean, just imagine if you live in a bad neighborhood, you're probably going to be finding a lot of stolen iPhones that are just out there in the wild. Uh, and it isn't really clear whether or not being part of this crowdsource location tracking system is something that you can even opt out of or not. You can, of course, turn off Find My Device, which means that your device won't be able to take advantage of the tracking system if it gets lost. But whether or not it disables your device sending reports to Apple about the last known location of missing devices that you might be walking past in the wild is unclear. Uh, then there is the issue of privacy by the implementation of the tracking system, how it's designed. So as usual, the application from Apple is proprietary and closed source. So it's not something that you can just audit on your own or have it reviewed by somebody that you trust by just looking at the code. It has been tested a lot and reverse engineered by security professionals who last year discovered that there were some design flaws that uh, they say could lead to things like a location correlation attack or unauthorized access to recent location history. 
Now, this has been something that was fixed by Apple last year, but there's obviously still concerns that could exist with something like this. Like, how can you prevent Apple from tracking you, right? How can you prevent third parties from tracking you? How can we prevent a giant database of the last known location of all the missing iPhones and really all the iPhones in existence, since they're also broadcasting their location uh, during this mechanism, from getting leaked? So since the design is not open source, the answer is pretty much just trust Apple. Uh, but what they would probably be doing is something like this. So we have the lost phone, which is gonna be Timmy, uh, your device passing by, which is gonna be Lassie, and the iPhone's owner being Ruth. So you're reporting Timmy's location to Ruth through Apple, but we want to make sure that people can't use their iPhones to just find devices that don't belong to them because then everybody would just be taking their lassies out and trying to hunt for Timmy's all day and then they'd be selling them to Epstein's estate for profit. So we can't have that. We can't have Timmy just yell out his name and his location. We need to use something smarter like a pseudonym. In fact, you could probably list, you could probably use a list of pseudonyms that can't be linked together that Ruth knows in advance. So Lassie needs to broadcast her location so that she can basically tell Ruth where Timmy is, but not in a way that third parties would be able to see where Lassie's location is, and not in a way that would allow Ruth to find out who Lassie is. So your phone needs to encrypt all of its location data when it is sending it over to Apple. So the protocol would probably look something like this. Timmy using a different pseudonym with each broadcast and a randomized copy of Ruth's public key. Lassie receives the broadcast and combines her GPS coordinates encrypted with Apple's public key and then sends it to Apple. Then Ruth sends in her list of pseudonyms that she uses with Timmy into Apple and Apple verifies if they're correct. And if they are, it gives the location information to Ruth with all of Lassie's personal details removed. So this solves most of the problems, but there are still some others. Mainly the fact that we are putting a whole lot of trust into Apple in this system. We are trusting Apple not to leak a database of location data of Lassie, which would pretty much reveal where you are throughout the day and everything that you're doing. And then obviously not to leak a database of where all of the missing devices in the world are. And then of course we're trusting Apple not to do anything malicious or anything that we wouldn't like with this data as well. Uh, so there's also nothing that's really keeping Timmy from being evil and trying to make Lassie report her location to Apple unnecessarily. Uh, so obviously this isn't a good solution if you don't want Apple to have data on you. And I guess it could also be an issue for battery life and things like that since it's going to be force using your Bluetooth uh, and then having you send information back to Apple. But who knows how much of a problem this will be, how much power uh, is granted to just this specific application. But there's also the issue of Apple getting more data about you, more location data about you unnecessarily because obviously Apple is going to get that information either way, but you probably wouldn't really be using Apple products in general if you didn't want them to get that kind of information about you. But let me know in the comments below what you think about Apple's Find My Device functionality. Would you use it even if it was open source? I mean, I guess even then it would still have to be designed in a way that it wouldn't give Apple access to any of the plain text location data. Uh, apparently it is encrypted in this case, but you know, even then, if Apple has the encrypted data, are they able to decrypt it? You know, is the encryption done in such a way that they would be able to undo it? Uh, and then it would also have to be done in a way that really only Ruth is ultimately able to get it because, of course, Apple is serving the information up to Ruth, so they're probably able to get access to the plain text info in some step. Uh, but even then, would you still use it, it even though it's an Apple product? Probably not.